everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I am making my homemade salsa. Now a little earlier I had went outside and I collected all my peppers and stuff and green peppers out of my garden. And I done a little video before I chopped everything up. So I'm going to put that on also um, so you guys can maybe want to run over there and watch that one you know before you watch this one or something um, just to see everything that I put into my salsa um, like all my peppers that I got out of my garden I got a few green uh, peppers I got a few um, jalapenos I got quite a few of the yellow um, oh my gosh what are they the uh, yellow banana peppers I got quite a few of them and so if you want to run over there it's only about a two minute video or so um, I was gonna connect it actually just go off that one but I ended up losing it on my computer it posted a uh, on my computer but I don't know I can't I brought it up but I can't like modify it to go um, on for some reason I don't know what the deal is with it but anyways <laughs> you get my point so anyways, I've got all my peppers and onions and everything, as you can see here, and I chopped them all up. I have a little mini chopper, and so I got them all chopped up, and um, in this back pan right here, I've got my bottles and some hot boiling water. In this pan right here, I've got my lids and my um, um, bands all in hot water, too, so... Um, that's what I like to do before I, um, you know, can all uh, my salsa and stuff. So anyways, um, I have my um, recipe right here, and I'm going to let you guys know. Now, this calls for, it says 30 or 40 tomatoes. Well, this year I did not get any tomatoes on my plants at all. Not even one. <laughs> not even one. So um, I had to improvise, and I just went to the store. And I've got six, um, let's see, 28 ounce cans of petite diced tomatoes. So we are going to pour these six cans into all um, our vegetables that I've um, grounded up and everything. So I figure, you know, I don't know, when I do this and I don't have the tomatoes, I usually just buy six of these cans and it usually turns out really good. Um, a good consistency and mixes really well with the peppers so we're just gonna pour six of these cans in here yeah it was really weird I don't know why I didn't get tomatoes this year I I'm baffled <laughs> um, I bought the the beefsteak tomatoes and it's just really weird that I didn't even not even get one tomato I also planted a couple of cherry tomatoes and I got them coming on um, no problem but then beefsteak I just uh, they just didn't even not even produce one and I went out there you know when I was out there this morning and they've got flowers and stuff on them but they're just no tomatoes I I'm baffled <laughs> So, I don't know if it's the sun and it's so, been so darn hot lately or what's going on with that, but I don't know. Maybe it could be just the tomatoes themselves. Maybe the beefsteak aren't very good or they're not real good ones to buy. I don't know. Um, if anybody has any suggestions, you know, on the tomatoes, maybe some that, you know, you guys buy to put in your garden, let me know that turn out for you, you know, every year, so... Because, like I said before, I usually do my garden because I love doing salsa every year. And this salsa recipe, you guys are really, really going to love. Um, I've been doing this recipe for 30 plus years. And um, it turns out great every time. Everybody just loves my salsa. So, um, I think you guys will really, really like this. Okay, now I am doubling my recipe on here, so I'll let you guys know 
Now it calls for one teaspoon of garlic powder, so we're going to do just one tablespoon of some garlic powder. Now like I said, I'm doubling this recipe, so 30 or 40 tomatoes cooked and peeled, 10 medium bell peppers chopped up, 7 to 10 uh, uh, yellow onions chopped up, 12 long green chilies chopped up, and 12 yellow chilies chopped up. Now I put a lot more peppers um, in mine. Um, the yellow um, banana peppers I had, oh my gosh, probably 15, 20 of them. And then also I added um, jalapeno peppers to mine too because um, I really like the taste of them and also a little bit of a hotness to it too. So, okay, so I'm doubling the recipe and then it calls for one teaspoon of garlic powder. So we're gonna put one tablespoon in. It calls for a half a cup of vinegar. So I've got one cup of vinegar right here that we're gonna put in. And then it calls for a third of a, a tablespoon of sugar. So we are going to put just one tablespoon in. And then it calls for a third cup of salt. Now I've got a third cup of salt here and I didn't want to go any more than that because that's quite a bit of salt already. So I think I'm just going to leave it at a third of a cup. So we're going to pour that in. And then also, it calls for one and a half teaspoons of oregano. So I've got some oregano here, and we are just going to put two tablespoons in of oregano. And then also, it calls for a third. Let's see. One, no, one and a fourth teaspoons of red pepper. I don't have any of that. And I think the reason for the red pepper is maybe the hotness of your salsa. Um, but I've got the jalapeno peppers in there and I think that's gonna make it hot enough. I think it's gonna be really hot actually this time. So I think that'll be okay. And then also it calls for two small bunches of cilantro. Now, I didn't pick up any cilantro. I went last night and I could not find it anywhere. So I just got some of this dried. So we are just going to pour, uh, pour this whole thing of cilantro leaves. Uh, 0.5 ounces is what it is. So we're just going to pour that whole thing in there. I really wanted to get the fresh, but gosh, I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah so and then also it calls for ooh, see, did i put that in there did i put sugar in there oh my gosh i can't remember it calls for a third of a teaspoon of sugar so let me see if i put that sugar in there i can't remember if i did or not there goes my memory right so i'm just gonna taste it No, I didn't put any sugar in there yet. So it calls for a third of a tablespoon and I'm going to put in, we'll just put in one tablespoon. I think that'll be good. And if I did put sugar in it, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> there goes my memory, right? Okay. Anyways, we're gonna mix this all up now. And it's really, really juicy. Oh my gosh. Oh, and all that cilantro in there, all them peppers. Um, I put about seven or eight onions in it. And I've got this little chopper that I chopped everything up with and it just makes it so, so, um, makes it really, really, uh, really good. Um, it chops it to where 
just the right consistency. I mean, a lot of people like their salsa, you know, not thick. Um, but I like mine like chunky. So that's why I left them, you know, not too bad. But I guess you can if you don't like it chunky, you know, just uh, chop your peppers finer and there you go. goodness and this recipe is really really good you guys are gonna like this recipe oh my gosh okay so if you guys can see that in there or not but it's really really good salsa and I'm gonna taste it actually so I don't have any chips but we're going to see what it tastes like. Oh my gosh, it's probably going to be hot. Oh man. It's way spicy. Way, way, way spicy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. So now you're going to want to turn this on. Your burner on. And you are going to want to cook this. Let's see. It says let boil for 10 to 15 minutes. Put in boil jars and seal. Makes about 5 to 6 quarts or 10 to 12 pints. So I've got about 13, I believe, uh, wide mouth jars in here. Plus I've got about 10 um, just regular um, mason jars here and these are the wide mouth right here so if I need any more than what's in there I've got plenty left over um, for more of the salsa and then so I'm gonna let this cook for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to come back and we're going to fill our jars and seal them and I'm going to put them in my pressure cooker and I usually do that for about oh my gosh I can't remember for how long um, but I'm going to look in my cur book and see how long it says for salsa I might not even have to use my um, pressure cooker maybe I'll just water bath them so anyways I will be back and we're gonna fill our jars and I'm gonna show you how I can these. Hello everyone and I am back. Now our uh, salsa has been cooking for about 15 minutes or so. And so it's done and I'm going to start taking the jars out and showing you guys how I can my salsa. So usually I'll just grab a bottle out of the hot boiling water here and then set it over here. Oh my gosh, let's see. And then I just get some salsa and pour it into my jars. And I'm going to make a mess here. As you can see, yeah, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I thought I had a little funnel for this because usually I'll put a funnel in this so it doesn't go everywhere and all over everything but I can't find it so I don't know what happened to it who knows okay so now with this you're gonna want to leave a one inch head space so at least one inch from the top Looks like it has just a little bit more in it. So, okay. Then you're going to want to take a clean rag and wipe off the top here. Because when you go to seal your jars, you don't want no food or no particles or anything like that. So, we're just going to try and wipe our jars off really good right here at the top and like I said this is I don't know where my funnel is for this but 
So this is going to make it kind of hard, but we'll get through it. Okay. And then you're going to want to come over here and that one there is a regular That one there is a regular lid. We're going to take this out of our hot boiling water. Put a lid on there. And seal it shut. We'll just stack them over here. And, oh gosh, where are we at? Okay. Now that one was a regular mason jar and this one here is a wide mouth you can see there's a lot of difference in between them so, oh my gosh this salsa is so good oh goodness yeah I'm gonna make a mess but that's okay we'll clean it up <laughs> and the same with the wide mouth too you're gonna want to leave a one inch head space or so on that and then take your rag and wipe it all off there you go make sure there's no debris no food no juice no peppers anything like that okay and then you're gonna want to come in here and let's see grab us a lid And the reason why you want to put your lids and your bands in boiling water is because um, you're trying to soften up this little paste here. Um, I want to say it's kind of like a waxy substance or something. Anyways, and so you just want to soften that up. That's why you want to put it, you know, in your water before you go to can um, all your stuff not just salsa anything you can so and you don't want to do real real tight just kind of snug so and then we're going to put these in our water bath and we are going to cook them for 35 to 40 minutes and i'm going to finish up the rest of these and then i'm going to come back and um show you how i put them in my um my great big pan back here and um We'll be back. Hi everyone, and I am back. So now this made 20 pint jars of salsa, right? Yep, and I'm gonna put them in a water bath right now. And I've got just like this small one right here. You can buy a bigger one that holds more jars. Um, this one holds six, I believe. So it's gonna take me a while to um, put these all in and get them all done so um, when they're done I think I'll just take a picture of them all and um, put them on my community page but as you can see the salsa it turned out really really good um, I don't know maybe if I shut this light off you might be able to see it a little better probably not it looks kind of dark <laughs> but anyways yeah it held 20 pint jars and so we're going to put them in the water bath for 15 to 20 minutes, pull them out, and they're going to be done. And you just um, wait for, after you pull them out of your water bath, um, put them on your counter. Make sure and listen for the seal because they will pop when they seal. And usually as soon as you uh, pull them out of the water, they start popping on you. So just make sure the lids are all popped down in. And um, if they're not, you know, just put the ones that don't, you know, maybe in your fridge or something. Sometimes I'll have one or two maybe that don't pop down, you know, and seal on me, so I'll just put them in my fridge. So this is the end of my video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, if you haven't subscribed to me yet, please do, and hit that thumbs up button for me, and ring that bell so you guys get my notifications. And you all have a wonderful night.